everyone knows how to say the word on the board before we put it up here, okay? All right, first word. Don't shout out answers. Uh, Tony. What is the word? Left. left. Okay, so I want you to put left, sounding out all the words, all the sounds, put it where it goes in your in your column. Left. A lot of our kids in this area um, live in low poverty. They have challenges at home. And so when there are challenges at home, you're not focused as much as you should be at school. So we have many kids here at Lakeside that struggle in reading. Um, they don't have the reading skills that they need to succeed. The reality is that we have students at all levels, students of all ages, all grades, that struggle with reading in, in some capacity. At the basis of everything is that our students have to be able to read or they can't access the curriculum we're trying to teach them. You can't take someone who can't read and, and, and give them Shakespeare. It's just, it's just not going to work, ever. I spent a lot of years explaining my heart out. Right, but even if I explain my heart out, but you still can't read the text, it doesn't matter how engaging, interesting, or how many pictures I draw. Uh, the consequence that I'm addressing is that we're gonna have kids that fall behind, and as the grades progress, the gap becomes bigger. I've got these young men, young ladies, who are struggling tremendously already, who are reading at a first, second grade level, and they're in seventh, eighth grade. I also know individually students that can't read that can't spell, the confidence erodes, and you see by about fifth, sixth grade, giving up. It's embarrassing to you when you get to be a certain age if you, if you stumble or you read a little more slowly. Uh, they're going to enter the workplace and, and they're going to be unable to, to read simple instructions. When people struggle to read, it becomes difficult for them to accomplish almost any goal they may have, whether it's getting a job or having stronger relationships, being role models for their children. All these are influenced by literacy. You need to be able to read and understand and to write, to express yourself and to get a job and to get into school, college, um, to be able to vote and to become a citizen. Reading is the key to success. Literacy is a problem everywhere. It doesn't matter if you're in a disadvantaged urban area, it doesn't matter if you're in an affluent area or somewhere in between. There are literacy difficulties everywhere and in, in every classroom, in every school. And many of the kids, even your high level students, are not reading to their potential. We have a serious problem here in Kings County and it's not going to go away unless we do something different. We struggle with the number of students that have difficulty reading and what aren't we doing right and what do we need to do next. We identified the problem, which is that 57% of students in our county are below grade level. That's our problem. And then we also identified our solution. The King's Literacy Initiative Pact is, is an agreement by all the participants from Kings County that we're going to change things in Kings County. We're going to make a difference for our students, for our population, for our citizens. Two years ago, around this time, I think, or believe, was um, the first training that one of our staff members went to for Edbley through CLIP. Um, but before that, it really started with um, a visit from Mike Robinson, um, who pretty much established CLIP um, for our county with the goal that he wanted his legacy to be literacy in Kings County for our students here. What's really wonderful about this particular project is that it's a consortium of uh, private sector, public sector. The, 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 uh, the schools, the administrators have embraced this, this idea. But the community's behind us and us doing this. Uh, there's 13 school districts in Kings County. I have visited all 13. I've talked to all the superintendents, principals, learning directors, and some teachers. I've gone to school board meetings and to explain what needs to be done. 
and that we're going to do something about it. And I can tell you without reservation, they support us. So the King's Literacy Initiative Pact is um, obviously a group of individuals in our community who are dedicated to promoting literacy across the county of Kings County and have come together. Uh, Tawny Robinson, interestingly, was a former board member for Hanford Elementary and her father-in-law, Mike Robinson, have put together this initiative to spread the awareness of literacy in our schools and providing opportunities for our students to reach high levels of literacy, bringing educators together along with community members. I think it's exciting. It's, it's an opportunity, um, especially when they had their lunchtime noon meeting and you had representatives from the 13 districts across um, the county come together for a common interest. So it's refreshing to see a, a room filled with um, teachers from uh, Pioneer, from Kings River, from Lakeside, from Corcoran, from Hanford Elementary um, coming together for a common, uh, common purpose. The beauty of what CLIP is doing here is they're marrying the community, the schools, the, you know, everybody together in your neck of the woods basically so that they can all work together for a common goal which is higher level literacy for all. We're going to have a pilot here in, in Kings County and we'll start with the K-3 to and the slogan for us when we're talking to teachers, don't blame them, train them. And that's what we've been doing in, in Kings County. It's so exciting to see teachers grab hold of this. I am the founder of EBLE, which is Evidence-Based Literacy Instruction, and it's the instruction that we are using to teach the teachers that are going to be teaching um, in the classrooms, the students. The Kings Literacy Initiative Pact has really um, gotten behind EBLE because I have found that Ebbly is what's going to make a difference to those five or six students that, that aren't proficient. The ones that everything that you've tried hasn't worked for them. When um, John Corcoran and, and Mike Robinson first approached me about doing this project, um, we had a conversation about doing it over time and having it be over five years so that both were not throwing schools and into something, you know, head first and then um, having it be overwhelming. We sat down, we went over all 13 school districts, we looked at their test scores, their population, um, their demographics, and divvied up 30 spots to each of the 13 school districts, including um, two private schools. When they're able to read accurately and automatically, their comprehension is going to continue to grow. We have kind of a, a really interesting cross-section in this room. We also have a lot of administrators, uh, superintendents, principals, curriculum directors, um, uh, people who are decision makers, and which is very exciting for them. They're usually doing a lot of other things, but to sit in here for three days and learn what their teachers are learning and, and what this is all about has really been quite profound. Our first goal was to host one training with a few teachers. We wanted to get 14 teachers and we got 35 plus 15 of their administrators. Then the second year we had over 60 educators come. E -A I'm fascinated by it. A um, little challenging at first, you know, trying to get rid of some old habits, uh, but I've been calling everyone I know that has young kids, I, I, I know it benefits all because it's benefiting me today. I've learned to spell some words I didn't know how to spell. Contagious. In three or four days, teachers are equipped to come into the classroom and teach every child how to read and you don't need anything special. Give me a whiteboard and a, and a, and a, and a marker, you know, and I will teach you to read. <laughs> you don't want to think so much, all right? So what is happening in the training is the teachers are learning the research-based um, concepts, skills, and activities to be able to teach to their learners. They're learning um, not just the theory of what you should teach, but they have the bridge to practice. That's what this training is really about. The science of reading, this body of knowledge, is pretty crystal clear on how the brain reads, how it processes print, how it processes the sounds of our words and how they're represented and the squiggles on our page and those kinds of things. Okay, so this is new code. This is where it's especially crucial. When your hand is writing that letter, I want your mouth to say what. 
even as much as you don't want it to, okay? At the exact same time. We're gonna get it in our brain. All right, everybody, let me hear you. Saying the sounds at exactly the same time that you write, that imprints, just like Kelly's saying, we're writing those four letters and saying A. Now the second time it goes through, it's just gonna be smoother and easier. So that's how you learn the code. It's an interesting ride now to see people really developing instructional practices based on how we know the brain does read, based upon how we know the brain has to have that neural circuitry developed, what our brain sees on the page, and how it, it connects to the sound and language structure in our brains to build a reading circuit, because there is no reading circuit in our brain. We aren't born with one. And a lot of people think we are. We presume, and we have for years, erroneously, that reading's a natural act. Because for so many of us, it did seem to happen naturally. But for so many more of us, and what seems to be more natural than not, is reading difficulty, sadly. Mm -hmm. Hey, you're, what's the first sound in your? Yeah. 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 yeah, how many letters? This is our yeah. Write it and say yeah. Yeah. Now, all right. Go ahead and write hyphen. Say your sound. Say it as you write, guys. Hyphen. Hey guys, would everybody tell me all the sounds in hyphen? Okay, start. Give me the, all the sounds in hyphen. Okay. I want to make sure you realize eh n is two sounds. So give them to me one more time. Hyphen. Uh, I, N. Hyphen. Beautiful. So I know you guys are good. If you're trying to spell a word or write a word, you say it very slowly in its individual sound segments. We're going to slowly say those sounds. And as we do, attach the squiggle, which is our lang English language's representation of that sound, and, and go one at a time. It breaks the word down. It teaches you how to sound it out. It teaches you all the word combinations that, or the sounds that these word combinations will produce. So they'll be able to go through a process that will allow them to spell words that they've never encountered before as they're hearing them. Um, without the fear of being embarrassed to make a mistake. So the beauty of that is it really makes the brain attend to the isolated sounds in a word, which is the pretty much predominant, all-encompassing area of difficulty for people who struggle to learn to read. Ebly is an interactive program. So they're constantly doing something, which keeps them engaged, um, reading words. They're saying as they write, they're writing on whiteboards. They're, you know, giving you syllables and segmenting and, and all that sort of thing. So um, they like it. I've been really impressed with Lakeside because they started three years ago when we first started with um, Clip and, and Ebley here with one teacher. So Adrienne, we sent her to the training um, solo by herself. She was our only teacher on our staff that went. I was questioning my teaching ability at that time um, because when you go to college, you don't take classes um, on how to teach reading. So walking away from that first training, and I, I'll be honest, I sat in my car and I cried. Um, and I called my superintendent and she's like, what's wrong? I said, oh my gosh, this training was amazing. I learned so much and it was just day one. And she came back with, I don't wanna say she was a little disappointed in herself, but she kind of was because there's some aha moments that come with it about, man, this is why the kids weren't getting it. So um, she kind of had a fire in her that she was gonna fix that. But at the same time, I was nervous because I wasn't sure if I was going to be able to perform the job for CLIP. Did I have it in me to be, am I going to be able to learn this stuff and then pass it on to my kids? For your next word. So we chose to start with one-on-one -on -one with students for her um, and then move to some small group as well her first year. Um, and we saw 
success, of course, with those students. Good job. Yeah. I was the only teacher um, the first year um, teaching Ebley on campus. So it was a little bit overwhelming because I didn't have that one person on campus to lean on. So the second year when our third grade teachers were trained, they knew what I was talking about when I went into the classroom and talked about how I was working with their students. They were more familiar with what I was using. But not only that, I can ask them a question. Well, what do you think about this word? How would you break, break apart this word? Um, and then we're able to share our stories, um, successes, as well as challenges, but the successes were more fun. Oh my gosh, you know, Johnny did this today and he wasn't able to do that eight weeks ago. Mrs. Gonzalez and Mrs. Ploy are an awesome team anyways, which is any, you know, administrator knows when you have an awesome team that works together, it is so much easier to implement things across a grade level. So they supported each other and were able to have Adrian as a reference as well for them. She did do some modeling for them at first because they still were a little uncomfortable about getting up and actually facilitating it themselves. Would you guys mind introducing yourselves? Yes. I am Mrs. Robinson and I'm from the King's Literacy Initiative staff and we're here to watch you guys do Evelyn's thing because we heard how awesome you're doing and how much you're learning. I'm, I'm Miss M Mrs. Murtis, and I'm same thing. We're here to watch how wonderful you're doing. We're here to watch how wonderful your teacher's doing and encourage you in any way we can. One of the reasons that CLIP chose Ebley as its system of reading instruction is the amount of follow-up support that's available to, to every teacher that goes through the training. We get to come back into your classroom and we teach a lesson for you and just um, reassert those strategies and provide the support and the guidance that sometimes teachers need depend even if they were rock stars at training they still need to know and to have that encouragement. You remember when we were here back in September? Yeah? Have you guys learned a lot since then? Yeah. yeah. Hey, I, I agree with you so I want to see it. We come back about three or four months later after the school year has started. And then we watch, that's when and when it's our opportunity to watch the teachers go to work and, and see their magic and see the growth that their students have already made in that three or four months time. But also to just refine and see if, you know, there may be some students that that can make more growth or that they are just struggling to really reach. We still are there to provide support to help one month in, four months in, and then th really throughout the rest of the year. I've noticed that us making that contact and being there to provide that support really is what makes it different than anything they've ever done before and also um, helps them to just keep going. Once you give them the sound, everyone in the class now knows the sound right. and if they're just pulling it out for themselves mm -hmm. even though it might take you a second um so just let them wait i mean just be patient to wait for them to pull the sounds we also sit so and what, go over that initial assessment say, data um, part of, so that of being said, um, knowing that we're providing quality reading instruction is assessment that is a component that clip has been in charge of is collecting and analyzing data from all of the students that are serviced with Ebley. So we, we give an initial assessment in the beginning of the year, then we do a mid-year assessment, and then an end-of-the-year assessment. And we go over that data with them in areas of word reading, fluency, and just being able to sit down with the teacher and, and talk about a real identifiable child and a student and their struggles and triumphs and how can we help those specific yeah, students then, makes a big difference to teachers too. And then we're looking at individual children and identifying what we can do to help that child and how can we help that one move and read to his or her highest potential. It's really powerful. Slower for you, but when I look at something like this and see that there was a student who made, uh, who read, and this isn't fluent, this is just word reading. So they were able to read in eight weeks time, they were able to read 21 more words. Yeah, from 14 to 35, that's impressive. And then in our third year, like the rest of the world, we, we were faced with a pandemic and schools shut down and really had to relearn and reapply what they did every day. And then everything happened. 
So um, I was very adamant and kept kind of hounding, honestly, about whether we were still doing the Ebley training or not. I came to Lakeside School's board meeting and learned that they had still made it a priority and that they were dedicated to continue with Ebley instruction through distance learning and that they had this momentum going from, they had one trainee at our first year of training. Last year's training, they sent their third grade team. And then this third year, they really wanted to, to just be all in. They wanted to send their whole staff to, yeah. to our training. And Nora being the literacy warrior that she is, she said, I will come out there for that school. We were able to bring Ebley here just for our staff and increase the number of staff that we sent to it. So now I'm going to have K-5 and SPED be trained and Ebley and be able to provide that virtually for now until I'm able to bring the kids back. So um, I really have high hopes. So if Adrian did the second grade, this activity with the second graders last year, we still will start with this with the third Did your first, with third grade? No, I, I wouldn't. I would start maybe with some sound lines and stuff, but I would skip this one because they already know what's going on with that. That even as a review? No, because you're going to be reviewing it. You know, this is to introduce that concept. So once you have had this introduced, you really don't need it again. Now I'm even extremely excited to have K-5 trained this year because now there's going to be consistency within the reading program and what the kids are getting um, each year. And... Um, with this five month break with COVID, they, they need this more than ever right now. So one of the things that um, I kind of struggled with and I was like, oh, okay, is when we were saying the sounds and writing it down. So like in urn, when I was saying er, I just wanted to write E-R. Like I didn't want to say no, urn is E-A-R. Right. This is so exciting that you said that, Kelly, because what you're doing is you're recreating pathways in your brain. Okay, we're making new connections by do, by you writing. It's going to be really amazing to see what happens when an entire school has one goal, one set of strategies that they're going to apply throughout their classrooms, throughout the school, the intervention teachers here, the, the special ed teachers here, the principal, the coach. Everyone is all in to do what's best for their students. And I'm so eager and excited to see what this year has in store. In spite of a pandemic, in spite of distance learning, the school is still all in and willing to do what it takes to make a difference and make an impact. What do you sniff with? What do you sniff with? With your nose, okay? Every time you watch one of those lessons, it just brings a smile to your face because there's so many of those bright moments we look for when we're in classrooms, you know, where the kids' eyes just light up because they're able to do something they didn't think they could accomplish. Parents have come into my office literally in tears. For the first time, my child read a chapter to me last night, and I didn't have to help them. It's been um, a remarkable turnaround in just the course of a school year to have a parent come in and just be so grateful that their child can read. Nothing is as powerful as an anecdote of a student who has experienced success. A student who couldn't read before and then and then was able to do something that they've never been able to do and the sense of pride and and the increase in self-worth that they experience and as as they look into their future and they start to see more and more possibilities I am so excited about the work that CLIP has done because it's really bringing together so many community leaders and also teachers to equip the teachers to work with students as effectively as possible to teach them how to read so that truly all these children will grow up with all of the possibilities and opportunities that, that they can have to become successful citizens and contribute to the community. So having a community committed to this and supporting schools, helping the teachers feel that their hard work in this is appreciated, knowing that no matter what, they're gonna be supported and keep doing it is going to keep it going. And then once a school district can have the science of reading and these successful approaches in place, they will never go back. 
any school, district, or county, anywhere, um, can integrate the community and the schools and follow this model that CLIP has uh, utilized and used with all of these, um, you know, the different schools and teachers that have been trained in this county. We know that if we can do it here in Kings County and have that kind of growth and support, that this same model can be, can be translated and done in any community. It just takes a group of, of dedicated people that really want to make a difference. When we began this journey, my main partner was my father-in-law, and he has since passed away, but I, we all have this strong sense that he's still here with us, and he's still providing that support that we felt from the beginning. And a thing that he often said to us was that you may not be able to change the world, but you can change your world. And I really feel like that's what we're doing here in Kings County. We're changing our world that we live in in this community. We can see and feel and hear those changes in literacy here in our community. What time is it, you guys? Yeah!